Now, going back to our inline list example, what happens if within the styles for each of our items, we had a margin on the right just to space things out a little bit? Let's say that was 10 pixels. Well, of course, that's going to space our items out. But for whatever reason, say we're putting this in a tight container, we might not want the margin on the last item. In fact, let's increase this just to make it uh, a little bit more extreme. Okay, so we've got our margin, but again, we want the last item to not have any margin on the right. So this is where modifiers come in. So this it, again is gonna look very, very strange, but once you start to work with them, you'll actually really start to enjoy working with it and how specific you are is really nice. Anyway, so our last item then, what we're going to do is for the class name, and again, this is gonna look really odd, we're gonna say inline list underscore item, and then we use instead two hyphens to denote the modifier, and then we give the modifier name. So for example, this could be last or end or whatever. So why are we rewriting out inline list item? Normally we might say something like ulli.last and then we define the styles on there as well. But again, we're not doing that for the reasons we've already discussed. So we use the same name with the modifier, so end or last, whatever we called it. So that was end. And then we define the new styles for this. So all we do is we say margin right zero. So now this will give us exactly the same but we just have no margin right on the last element. So try and wrap your head around how this looks. Of course, at first it does look a bit excessive, but once again, this is a very widely followed methodology and really the joy of just writing all of this out makes it a lot clearer. It's very descriptive and really just makes sense considering we now have a completely flat file. And of course we can apply modifiers to our block as well. So we could do something like inline list bordered. And then we could say we want a border on this. I'm gonna make this look really ugly. And then of course we could use this then in addition to our main block class. And then we get the following result. So it's really about just having all of these modifiers attached to whatever you want that slightly modify the appearance of them and then we can have multiple ones because they're very descriptive it's really easy to see exactly what's going on here it's really easy to modify this css because we can see exactly what we're doing we're not going to come across any problems where we can't update something because it's tied into another element it's all very flat and easy to work with and this is really the main goal for me just making sure that things are really easy to update as your project grows larger. We're obviously looking at very simple examples here, but as you can imagine, as your project grows larger and you have lots of small components that you can reuse with lots of little modifiers, this makes working with your elements really easy. So we've already discussed blocks, elements, and modifiers, and this is pretty much it. There's not really much else you need to know about this methodology. We've seen how it works. We've talked about the fact that it does look a little bit strange. We've seen how we write the styles. We've spoken about the speed benefit of this and the ease of maintainability. But really, we want to take things a little bit further. And if you're working with a preprocessor like SAS, then using this is so much better. If you were to write everything out in a flat file, that's fine but using a preprocessor makes working with them even easier. So even if you haven't used a preprocessor before, we're gonna cover doing this in the next section. So let's jump over and look at working with them in SAS.